competition occurs. Now electricity can also be generated from heat. Uh, here's an example of a device of a spaceship that visited Jupiter. This was the Galileo probe and some years ago it visited Jupiter and uh, because the light there from the Sun is not real bright solar panels were not a practical option and so they used a thermoelectric generator. The thermoelectric generator you can see uh, off out on the booms those two cylindrical objects with the fins on them. The, a thermoelectric generator needs only a difference of temperature or heat and cold to generate electricity. The principle of a thermoelectric generator is that you use two different metals in contact or, co or uh, put together at a junction and welded together and uh, you have two junctions one where you have a hot junction and another where you have a cold junction. Uh, metals such as copper and iron can be used for this and if you have one junction cold and one hot you will get a current flow or a volt and a, and a voltage. You can make a practical generator such as is shown on the upper right hand corner. This was like the one on the spaceship. Uh, there you had the outer sp the cold of outer space providing the cold and the inside w had the nuclear source the plutonium producing the heat and this was able to make uh, electric current for the electronic and electrical equipment aboard the spacecraft. Thermoelectric junction, I mean, I mean, I mean thermal, thermal junctions, thermal, or thermal couples are used uh, to measure temperature because they produce a voltage. So here we see a voltmeter, a couple voltmeters, one's a multimeter actually with an attachment that uh, you can connect to it. Uh, some of you in the class may recognize that voltmeter and it does have that accessory with it so you can use it as a as a temperature measuring device. Thermocouples are used in your home. You probably have one uh, in your furnace. The pilot light, which is run off of propane or natural gas, is held or is a, has a thermocouple near it, which picks up the heat from the pilot light. And as long as the pilot light is on, it's generating an electric current, which keeps a valve open that lets the gas flow to the pilot light. But if the pilot light were to say blow out, then the thermal the thermal couple will cease to generate current and will not keep the valve open and will shut the gas off. These protect us from explosions. Uh, in other words, uh, if we didn't have one of these in our furnace, then potentially the, if the pilot light blew out, we would fill up the furnace, the closet that the furnace is in, with with uh, gas and we could blow up our house and that. So these things prevent a lot of, of accidents from happening. Thermocouples are also can be run in reverse. If you turn them on and put a current through them, you can have one side cold and one side hot and generate, uh, make a little refrigerator, for example, or uh, a warmer. So you can keep your pop or beer clean, cool in, inside your car. Anytime you have heat, it causes electrons to get excited in a metal. Uh, the electrons are more excited in a hot metal than they are a cold metal. In fact, if you heat a metal up high enough temperature, the electrons will actually try to jump out of the metal. Now this is used for a practical application in a vacuum tube, such as the vacuum tube invented by Thomas Edison. Here we see a hot filament in which a electrons are moved from the hot filament to a plate. And this is called a diode because only the electrons can go from the hot filament to the plate, but not back backwards. And so we have a one-way valve for electricity. Another way of generating electricity is from pressure. If you squeeze certain crystals, they can produce electricity. You may recognize a piezoelectric lighter. You can use those to light your barbecue. And they produce several thousand volts uh, on when you squeeze a crystal. The uh, pair of shoes there has a little crystal in it to generate voltage to power a device to measure the distance that you walk or run. Crystals are used in electronic devices. Not only will crystals e produce electricity when you squeeze them, but they will also vibrate if you excite them with electric with voltages. And so they can oscillate. You you can make them become like a bell and ring at a certain frequency depending on how large they're cut. 
So by cutting the crystal to a particular size, you get a particular resonant frequency, and they're very precise uh, resonators. You see there a 1 megahertz crystal oscillator, like might be found in a computer. Electrons are moving around all the time in wires. In fact, uh, they can not you can say that any piece of wire has electrons moving around in them. You only get a current, though, when you have more electrons moving in one direction than another. And so we call that a net displacement, or net current, when more electrons move in one direction than another. That's what we call a current. But electrons do move around all the time. They move around in the atoms, and they move around in the metal. And they move around regardless, even if you cool them to a very low temperature, such as absolute zero. They call this the zero-point energy of the electrons. Some have theorized that perhaps it might be possible to tap this as a source of energy. The problem is, though, that it's present everywhere in all, everywhere in the wires, and so you don't have a voltage difference. You only have, you have a potential, you have no potential difference. You have to have a difference of voltage in order to produce electricity. So the, even though the electrons are constantly moving around, because there's no difference in potential, it's not a useful form of energy. It's just an, it's, 